So this is going to be a fairly straightforward project, I hope. Um, I'm not planning on doing anything too spectacular with it. But I've been wanting to build these for quite a while. And I've actually got these upgrade parts that I've been selling for a while as well. I developed these about a year ago and they've been selling fairly well. But I've never got to use them myself. So um, so obviously this is the Romulan Warbird from AMT's um, adversary set. This one is the old version. You can tell by that decal sheet there. Um, they've re-released this, I think, at least once since this initial version of the kit, and it's but it's it's exactly the same. Um, there might be some differences in the decal sheet, but the the plastic is exactly the same. So, like I said, I'm going to be using these um, upgrade parts that I've developed for this kit, and they're translucent, um, the same sort of material that a lot of the Enterprise D parts are made from. This translucent uh, polyurethane resin and it transmits light really quick really efficiently and really effectively so the plan is going to be just to light up the inside of this do all the light blocking from the outside and then use a, a real small pin vice drill to open up all of the like billion windows that there are all over this thing because the scale of the ship is apparently is huge it's something like twice the size of a galaxy class apparently so the windows need to be really tiny and you could do it with fiber optics but this is going to be a much quicker way of going about it so um you can see laid out is basically all the parts that i'm going to be throwing together to try and create the finished ship um the paintwork is going to be fairly basic thankfully there's no massively complicated aztec patterns there's just some shading and panel lines and weathering on the on the surface of the hull but it's fairly straightforward so looking forward to this should be a fairly quick build um i'll touch base um periodically and catch you up with progress as and when it happens but it shouldn't take too long to really get this thing together um you can see these led strips i'm i'm expecting that 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 is the grand total of the lighting <laughs> that this should need to get it all lit up i'm not expecting it will take any more than that most of that's going to go in the engines anyway um so the biggest problem to solve with this is the jigsaw puzzle of how to assemble it um, and deal with the seams and paint it because when it all goes together it sort of forms like a hollow clamshell like I'm, I'm sure you're all aware of how it, how it looks when it's built but it means that you can't paint these inside surfaces after it's all been assembled you have to do it in sort of halves and then put it all together and deal with the seams so that with the added lighting cause you know it creates a few other things that you need to sort of plan for so i'm sort of started to get my head around that a little bit made a little little bit of a tentative sort of plan but obviously that will probably change as i start going but um, we'll see i've already made the anchor point for the support stand that's just a piece of brass tube coming up through the bottom and held in place with a load of that steel uh, steel enforced epoxy putty which is rock solid stuff really good you can really rely on it and for the stance i've kind of got it sort of rolled over and pitched up slightly so it's kind of you can't really tell on um the way i'm holding it at the moment but when it's finished you'll be able to see um just to give it a little bit more of a dynamic sort of stance on the on the stand there so rather than just flat and horizontal um, I'm going to use one of those dome bases. I can't remember what kit I got that from. Might have been a thousand scale enterprise refit. Can't remember. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start planning out the lighting and maybe put some light blocking in 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 a few spots. Start thinking about getting some wires running and how I'm going to tackle this assembly. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Uh, well, it'll be a few seconds for you. Uh, no telling how long it'll be for me because. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to take, so I'm going to get cracking anyway, and I'll be back in a bit with the next uh, update. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, so I'm going to start off with the tail. Sort of kind of makes logical sense for me to start there. It's going to be a pretty easy thing to tackle um, first off. So this is the resin part that I've molded and cast in translucent urethane resin, and it's just the stock kit part basically that's been assembled and then remolded and recast. So um, there's not a lot. There's not a great deal of surface detail on on this part on the original model, so uh, I didn't add any on there. It's just purely to facilitate window lighting without having to drill millions of holes and running fiber optics and all the rest of that. So um, it's going to be a pretty simple method for lighting this up. 
if I just open up these halves of the bot lower clamshell, you can see there's just a tiny single length of LED strip there and it's going to be neutral white lighting on, that I'm going for all the windows on this ship. So just one strip there and similar on the top, there's a strip on the top. So basically what's going to happen is when the tail is assembled in, in position, the, the tab will locate so once the tail is assembled in position, the lights will shine up from below and down from above and the translucent nature of the resin will transmit and distribute the light quite evenly in there and it should be an easy job to open up all those windows. So um, a couple of notes about this part. The, um, there's a tiny seam line that runs along this. Um, all of this you won't see anyway. It's hidden when the kit is assembled, but you will see it. Oops. You will see it around the back portion, right on the end of the tail, and you will see it there, the like the inner sort of scooped face. Um, that's just where the part line on the rubber moulds uh, come together and you get a tiny seam there. That's, it's completely unavoidable, that's always going to happen. So, But it's just a simple case of giving it a rub over with some sandpaper, cut the layers of primer and polish it away and, and that'll be disappeared and you'll never know that it was there in the first place. Um, uh, the other thing to mention is that if you're going to do this, if you're going to go this route um, yourself, you'll notice that the clearance between the LEDs and this tab isn't enough to allow both in the same space. Like there's just no room there once the LED tape is there. So you're gonna have to sand this down a bit. Um, I mean, if you wanted, you could completely remove it, but there's no need to do that. Probably take it down by about half and just leave enough there to engage with the locating slot and that should be good to go. So um, that will be very simple um, to take care of that. And you can just see on this head section, this is the way I'm gonna go about lighting up the head. One tiny length in each head. Uh, head half and when it's assembled together they'll face in towards each other and there'll be plenty of light in there that should get spread all or all throughout this um, head and give us plenty of light there are some windows um, there are some windows up in these areas I believe I'll have to go and check the reference again but from memory I think there's a lot of windows in here so if for some reason the, it appears that they're getting a little bit dim and there's not quite enough light and it's not spreading enough it will be a simple job of um, directing an LED into the neck and getting some more light coming in from this direction and similarly from below just pointing LED through there and it will spread the light down through the like the lower arm and get those windows lit because I know for, for sure there's a lot of windows along that part there so um should be a pretty simple deal so i'm going to move on and get some more of this tucked away and get some more of the plan in my head and we'll see what happens next let's have a quick look at these engines then so you can see i've put some led strips in there and i've tinted the clear parts with some clear green um, paint um because obviously these are neutral white leds just to, you know for simplicity's sake and i don't have green uh, strip LEDs at the minute so the old tint technique will be all right for this I don't generally favor this kind of method I like to leave the clear parts as a frosted sort of neutral color but yeah, it'd be fine um, I'll go that route with this um, trying something slightly different to diffuse it because obviously a row of LEDs like that is going to cause a row of hot spots um, and normally I would use like fibre fill or um, you know that cotton woolly sort of material to diffuse all this but I've got some of this plastic um, it's like styrene board uh, corrugated board sandwiched between two sheets uh, you, you, you see this sort of thing on signs and things like that in supermarkets and um, I've got some of this in my stash and I thought actually I'll give that a crack um, and it actually works really well so um, if I just lay that there for now, um, again, this was white before I've just sprayed over it with some translucent green. Um, this is going to be quite crude, but you'll get the idea. I've got some of this, um, like foam packing material that you get, um, 
if you have something valuable in the post it'll, it'll have this stuff so i'm going to sandwich that in there for those front um, emitter parts um, and just to get an idea of what sort of diffusion i'm getting from this styrene sheet now that's not bad that's pretty good um there's it's a bit hot spotty but that's that's more down to the fact that the sheet is sitting on the leds there's a little bit of clearance here and what i'll do is i'll stick it to the back of that clear sheet uh that clear part so it's in contact with that and there'll be a, a slight gap and it will diffuse it even more because the leds won't be in contact with the plastic sheeting um and you can see it get you get it doesn't really show on camera but it's like a nice um I don't know, it's like an energy, it looks like an energy sort of um, diffusion layer behind there, created by that styrene when it lights up, it gives it a nice look. So I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, the only thing is these front emitters aren't lighting up very well, so I might try and sneak in like a little SM LED pointing out the front somewhere, try and cram it all in in that tiny little space. So um, I'll scratch my head over that for a little bit and um, I'm sure we'll be able to get these engines lit up pretty easily so let's crack on with that so moving on moving on um, I've got all of the wiring in which isn't a great deal I'll put a couple of pictures up now so you can see what there is it's like I said before this is really basic there's not a lot of lighting in this thing so um, and I've sealed up the clamshell halves for the top and bottom so you can see where those that row of LEDs for the upper hull and on the lower hull they sit there so those lights are gonna shine down into the tail but yeah I've dusted that in white primer just so I can see any surface blemishes it's important to, to do the first um, layer of paint in white because then um, the inner it's kind of difficult to explain but if, if you imagine um, if you were inside this solid piece looking out towards the face it, that layer would be white now so um, when you cover that with grey or black to do your light blocking to get it all light tight it would still have that that initial layer on the inside of the clear would be white if that makes sense then it, it gives you a much better um, light dispersion and, and brightens the whole thing up that will become apparent later on in the build so um, what I did do just quickly is I masked off these faces so they didn't get any of that white because obviously that's where the LEDs are going to be shining up through so you want the light to get in there as much as possible so and also it's the contact point where you're going to glue the, the part to the upper and lower hole part so you don't want any paint there anyway um, so the idea is so I'll just throw this power supply on. Now this is only very crude again because um, there's only obviously one light source at the minute. They'll, that will be mirrored on the on the upper surface when the other when the top part of the hull is in place. But um, once this is all light tight, you won't. It, it will look a lot more even than that. Um, particularly when I just start poking little holes in the paint with a little drill bit, it, it won't look like this. It would be much more. Um, sort of evenly spread throughout the part once you start trapping that light inside with the layers of paint it, it sort of starts to bounce around and even out quite a lot you'll still get slightly brighter windows down here than up there for instance but a little bit of variance is good anyway because the windows won't all be lit consistently if this thing was real anyway so that's how it's going to look so pretty simple affair um i've got the wire uh, sticking out each side of the wings for the nacelles and then this is the um, the cable that will go up in up through the middle of one of the engines they're taped off at the minute so you can't tell but basically the wires will pass up straight through the engine the cells there and up into the upper half and connect there with those wires and then the head will be lit with those wires there so basically that comes along here somewhere again i'll put a photo in and then it tees off one going to the back for the tail light um sort of strip and then a feed going towards the head for the headlights 
uh, not as in headlights for a car, the lights in the head section. So um, let's move that all out of the way. Quick look at the engines, they're all taped up. I've glued them together and done my first pass at taking care of that seam. Obviously, um, it looks good at the minute, but primer reveals all, so I'm expecting a little bit more work to be needed on the seams. But to be honest, they're not too bad, they look pretty good. Um, so, yeah, they're ready to get painted primer wise. Uh, let's just move this out of the way and just talk quickly about the head. So for the head halves, um, again, these are the translucent upgrade parts that I make. Um, now this is a tricky part to kind of assemble, um, but that's kind of par for the course with these things. Um, the the original parts that I used were the kit parts um, that come in the kit anyway. I've just added extra detailing, and it's kind of easier to see it now. It's got um, dusting of white primer on it, but you've got these extra layers of sort of pinstripe lines that aren't on the original kit part that I've added that are up, that are on the studio model, um, just to sort of punch it up a bit. And I've um, sort of changed the the curvature of this part. It was quite a lot more square, I think, um, from memory on the kit part, and I've just sort of made them a little bit softer on the curve there, make them a little bit more, a, a bit more of an organic shape to reflect the original a little bit closer. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's a little bit tricky to get everything lined up because the original kit parts don't line up really well, and that was the basis for this for these parts anyway. So once you've got it all together, you, you're going to have to take care of that seam, and you know it's right up through the middle of the face. So a little bit of work to do there, but nothing that wouldn't have existed on the original kit parts anyway. Um, and there's a lot to be gained from this this part being a translucent part. So um i can't remember if i've shown the lighting arrangement for this part yet so I'll, I'll put some photos in here if i haven't just to show the couple of led strips put in there and i've i've positioned a three mil led to point it somewhere about where my finger is on the inside pointing back out in this direction to get some of these lights lit up that sit in this back area um so yeah, um, if you're building this and using these parts, um, a couple of things to note is I've used five minute epoxy to glue these together. Um, I did that on purpose. I chose five minute epoxy because it's it's quick enough to get um, the part stuck together without too much waiting around, but it's slow enough that you can manipulate the halves and try and split the difference getting everything lined up. Um, before it starts to cure off and, and set and then you're stuck with two head halves that don't line up very well um, So just take your time with that um, All I did was butter one side going all the way around with a with the epoxy Then press the halves together and then start clamping it as it starts to spread and move Just sort of correct it and massage it into position and add a clamp here and add a clamp there where it needs You know wherever you see fit and um Eventually you'll, you'll split the difference enough that you get the key areas as close as they can without having to rework a lot of the shapes too much. So um, yeah, a little bit tricky, but not too bad really. Another thing to mention is the upgrade part as you get them, this is going to be kind of hard to see because this is just raw out the moulds. Obviously there's a lot of shine on this part because there's a lot of mould release on it. So, you know, wash your parts goes without saying. Um, but you'll see the poor stub that's been cut off. There's a lot of extra material there um, in this area. So there's a couple of ways that you can tackle this um, sort of area where it meets the kit. The original kit parts has this location boss, for want of a let, uh, for want of a better term. Um, and the original kit parts would clamp over that and that gives you a really strong contact point where the you know to sandwich it all together and glue it all together so it's a good method uh, like i said there's two ways to tackle this you can either for simplicity's sake you can just flat sand that straight off there and leave the thickness in the resin there and then take a razor saw or something and just cut away all of this boss back to that lip 
and then you can just butt joint it. Um, and that will give you a good solid connection point. Nothing wrong with doing that at all. I've decided to go a slightly different route and you can see I've not only have I cut away and flat sanded it up to where it would meet that part, this this ridge line sort of thing, but I've also thinned the material away and given clearance in that resin so it can now accept that boss as a plug to give me even more strength. And no other reason than just to see if it was possible and you know so when i'm eventually asked the question how should i do it you know there's two options <laughs> and i know you know that you can do it this way so that's what i'm going with um pretty simple stuff but worth pointing out anyway so the last thing i think i'll mention before i carry on and stop waffling is um i'll just give you a demo about how well the light shines through this part and that again um this is still very crude because it's only a light dusting of the white primer it's not fully light tight by any means um so the lights will look very saucy and hot spot sort of you know it, it will look direct in it in in an area and almost like there's no light elsewhere but when you get it all light tight it does even out quite nicely so there we go and this is under a desk light so it's you know it's fairly bright ambient light in this room at the moment and uh, there's plenty of light being thrown around in there so that's going to do a really nice job i've got a slight variance in the color these are more warm than this cool white led they are actually neutral um but it's going through white paint there and this is a cool white LED, so you're getting a slight variance. But again, I'm not too worried. Who's to say that these lights up here don't have slightly different um, properties in the window material that the Romulans used up here? I, I don't know, nor do you. So <laughs> uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. So there we go. Uh, very effective. This translucent resin really works really well for this um, application, and it's going to save me loads of time at the back end when i start drilling through the paint and just opening up all these billions of windows it's going to start looking really nice so there we go so now i'm going to start taking care of the seams on the head start tidying that up um i need to do quite a lot of work around this shockingly bad fit but again the kit is famous for this sort of thing it's a very old kit um i got it together as well as i could um but it needs a lot of work so yeah gonna crack on with that and before you know it i'll be throwing paint at this thing primer it and painting it so it's gonna be a pretty decent quick build hopefully so i'll be back in a sec with a little bit more progress and uh i'll catch you up as and when so see you in a minute right time for a quick catch up um apologies if i'm sniffing sniveling to the camera i've got to come down with a cold for the last day or so so i'm feeling a bit under the weather uh, but I'm cracking on with this anyway regardless so uh, dealing with the seams on these sort of upper and lower hole halves this is the lower one obviously um, the front seam is nice and tidy uh, so that's nice just working on this horrible fit issue that plagues this kit huge gaps there and yeah it doesn't really fit together too well but making the best of that as it comes and the nacelles just one of the one example here uh yeah really nice and clean looks like one solid piece of kit so happy with that uh, just a quick mention about these um extra parts that come in the upgrade um, set these are the sort of surface dressing details that don't come on the kit um that were missed for whatever reason uh, I don't know whether they didn't have full access to the filming model when they were made the tooling for this kit or whether it, it wasn't finished, the filming model wasn't finished so they just sort of based it on how it was at that time, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe I'll find that out during the course of this build but I uh, can't really explain that but anyway these these details are missing and they are provided in the, up, the upgrade set and as you receive them they'll have this surrounding material just from the way they were cast 
they'll be on like a little raft of um, supported material and then after you prep them this is how they'll look uh, it's sort of tough to to make it out especially with big fat hands in the way but um, that's one of these sort of weird sci-fi shovel looking thing these detail parts go on the side face of the nacelles now it's kind of um, tough to see whether they're on both sides because I've seen reference photos of of the side of of a side of the Romulan um, filming model that doesn't have it and I've seen um, reference with it on there so I don't know whether they were removed or they were added at some point or had it on one side and not the other and it depending on which side was facing camera I don't know so um, I've provided two in the kit so you can make your choice and you can put one or other or you can put both on but again it comes on cast on this like larger piece of supporting resin which you need to clear away and when you've done that obviously it looks like that very thin and finally you've got these little pips that um, they go somewhere here I think um, I think from memory I might be wrong but I think one that they sit there and obviously the other side is there and you get these one there and one there these are cast flat so once you've prepped the part you just sort of warm it up either in some hot water or with a hairdryer or something get it malleable so the so the resin gives a little bit and just impart a bit of a curve into it and um, get it to match the curvature and glue it onto there but I'll come onto that in a bit uh, so yeah um, these surface dressing details so as I said um, you'd need to do a little bit of prep work so I'll just show you that in real time just to show you how easy it is um, let's clear the decks a little bit um, let me sort of rearrange this bit and we'll get into it a little bit more um, detail how you actually prep these parts right so prepping these resin parts um, you can see with all of the dust that's already on this towel here that I've, I've already done this step with half of the parts so I, I thought it was useful to show this on camera how how you sort of intended to tackle it um, now if, if I get a close-up here you'll see where the actual part edge is is here that's the actual edge of the finished part so all of this surrounding material needs to go um, it's fairly thin if you can make that out the support material is fairly thin but the actual part itself is even thinner just that very thin surrounding material is very thin um, now it's up to you how thin you get it um, it is really up to you if you want to try and get it that paper thin it is doable um, but like I say you don't have to do that it's just sort of wherever you feel comfortable getting down to before you start blowing through the plastic or you know however you feel comfortable doing it um, so all you need to do really is trim away the excess now what I what I do is leave a little piece of the surrounding material I don't try and trim all the way up to that edge just leave a little bit extra and that does two things one it stops you damaging this part on the sort of first go at clearing it out and cutting too close and damaging it but it also leaves a little bit of a witness um, area around it so you can keep track of how thin you're getting and that will become clear in, in a few minutes so um, apologies if this is hard to see but um, basically take a pair of scissors or a knife or you know whatever and just cut away again not all the way up to the part leave I don't know a mill something like that surrounding it but just get rid of most of it like this not, not being too careful too precious or waste material anyway um, so I've cleared it out but now you can see I haven't gone all the way up to the edge of the part it's there but I've got probably about just over a millimeter something like that of the excess material still showing through because it's good a good indicator there where you've got the beveled corner of the actual part 
and like the sharp edge of the surrounding bit so now it's just a case of flat sanding it and to do that i've got some 120 grit sandpaper that i've just double stick taped to a block of wood it's a poor man's uh, flat sanding block very cheap as am i does the job really well and uh 240 grit just to sort of smooth off at the end so the idea being you just lay it on your sanding block and gently and even as evenly as possible with a little bit of pressure but not too much just start battles and forwards a few passes and it's very important to do this turn it around and do it again a few passes and turn it and keep doing that make sure you keep turning it around and the reason you do that is if I was just to just put pressure on it as it is in this orientation and just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going, what tends to happen is you, you'll apply more or less pressure in one direction all the time. You'll favour it one way or the other and that will vary from person to person. You might press more with your index finger as you're pushing up than you do with your middle finger when you're dragging back and what that does is it sands it unevenly and you start to clear more material on one side of it than you do the other and it's not sanding flat anymore you're you're imparting a sort of a beveled edge onto the back of it and you'll clear right through the back corner here before you've even got the material um cleared away here so to maintain that perfectly flat or as perfectly as you can do a couple of strokes and turn it and that way you're evening it out as you go and you can see the amount of dust that's already starting to build up on the block goes pretty quick and you just keep going like this and just go methodically it takes a few minutes blow off the excess And have a look see how we're getting on still a fair amount but you can see even with me turning it around i don't think you can make that out i've got slightly more thickness still on this front corner than there is on this back corner that, and that means that i'm slightly uneven when i'm sanding this so i need to try and put a little bit more pressure on this corner so and for me it tends to be my index finger that does more of the work so I'll, I'll put my finger on that corner your mileage may vary and just give it a, a bit of extra elbow grease blow it off again now another look it's hard to tell because it's white uh, and don't really show it very well what you could do is um, give this a quick dusting with primer just to help you like visually be able to see it a bit better so it's starting to even out there and you just keep going doing this so I'm gonna keep going and speed this up Right, so, I don't know if you can see, but that is getting really thin. It's literally like paper. So I'm nearly there. So I'm going to keep going until that is all the way sort of crumbled away. And what will happen is as you, as you sand that surface, as it gets thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, if I can indicate it half sharp, as this surrounding material gets thinner and thinner and thinner, as you meet this depth at the bottom of this, the edge of the part, this will just sort of peel away as you break through and clear it. It'll peel away. Then you know you've got to the actual thickness of the part. Um, again, I'm still a little bit thicker there on this corner than I am here. This is paper thin, so I'm about to break through there. So I'm going to keep going a little bit more. I'm going to take a few more seconds. And then I think we're thereabouts there.
Right, so I've just broken through. Let me just get my tweezers again. I've just broken through. Can you see where that's that's separated? That's because I've reached that depth. So it's really useful leaving that surrounding material. See the way it's just sort of peeling away now. So I've got down to the depth of the plastic. I'm a little bit shallow. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit short of it there, although it is coming off. So there we go. Dead simple. A little bit um, fiddly. You have to go, you know, with a little bit of care, but pretty straightforward. Nothing, you know, nothing, nothing undoable. If you know what I mean, it's not impossible to do. And now. You can see how thin that surrounding material is. Lovely. Now, like I said before, you don't, if you're not comfortable taking it all the way down to that depth because you're worried about blowing through and not getting it even, by all means, you know, stop a little bit short of it. It doesn't matter. And where you've got that, once you're happy with the thickness, if you've still got that slight rim of um, surrounding material, just, just sand it away on the edge. No one will know. It doesn't matter. So there we go. Um, it's a little bit rough on the back, you know, it's no great shakes really, but I'll just take the next um, grit and just smooth it off a little bit. Don't go too mad because I am extremely thin now on that back and I don't want to start blowing through the actual part. So that should do it nicely. And there we go. And you can see just on this back part, you can see how thin that thickness is because it's, it's almost clear. I bet if I there you go, like you see the air bubbles in the resin, but you can see how thin it is because you can see the part through it. It's almost like paper. So there we go. That's a properly prepared part. Properly prepared part. Say that 10 times fast. Um, just square it off a little bit. Any rough edges. Looks pretty good. Sorry if this is out of focus. I'm not a cameraman, as I've said in previous videos. And there we go. That's the process. And you repeat that process with all of the parts. Um, the, the trickiest one is probably this little pip, just because it's so small. It takes a little bit of effort to sort of hold it under your finger and, you know, take a little bit extra care, keeping it as flat as you can. Um, I did give a little bit excess thickness on the part just to help mitigate any issues of sanding it unevenly and not getting it dead flat um, to give you a bit of a chance to try and recover it before you, before the part gets too thin so um, again go to your um, preferred thickness if you're a little bit worried at some point then just stop and leave it at that it's no worries um, so i'm going to repeat those steps on the other two parts until they look like this look at the state of my hands Bone dry, lake beds. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a few minutes. So I'm just clearing away the excess on this thin part and I just thought it was worth mentioning that this is a very thin, fragile detail piece. You can see there's some really, really thin bits in the middle there. So take extra care when you're back sanding this that you don't crush those parts and also that you don't blow all the way through the material so this part in particular um, is one to take care of doing so if you get to a certain depth and you think you know what i'm i'm getting a little bit worried about this then there's no problem in again just sanding it flat along those edges squaring it up to where the edge of the part should be um, you can see it there that's the actual edge of the part um, and just take it to as thin as you're comfortable with and then just finish the edges off. I'm going to keep going because um, why not? Um, but yeah, I just thought it worth mentioning, you know, do your best not to damage these parts because they are super, super thin. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. Right, I've just finished prepping this part and... As I just warned a few seconds ago, I've broken off those tiny fins in the middle there, those really thin, um, if I just get this other part to compare it, sorry about the focus, 
see right in the middle there those two really thin fins thin fins they're broken off in the lower part so never mind if you really care about it that much you can just cut some really thin plastic card and stick some new ones on there with a you know a drop of ca or whatever i'm not going to worry about it um you barely tell by the time there's paint on there you're not really going to be looking at those anyway there's just a bit of visual interest and a bit of surface decoration so i'm not going to worry about it so there we go um that's those two parts i've got the space shovels sci-fi shovel things whatever they're meant to be and the these two things there we go that's a handful of surface decoration so I'm just going to see CA these on the surface obviously I'm going to warm these up and give them a little bit of a bend so they'll fit that shoulder that shoulder uh, to fit that curvature there and um, get them glued in place now, um, normally it's good practice to glue bare plastic to bare plastic or you know whatever you're gluing not not um you know sort of substrate to substrate not painted surface to something but since these are just surface decoration they're not a load bearing structure or a join or anything like that i'm just going to tack them straight down to the paint it's primer it's adhered pretty well they literally just need to hold the part on um and even when i've got a, a couple of extra layers of primer on there just that layer of paint will probably do enough job to keep them stuck down as it is so um i'm going to move on with that and uh, i think we should be thereabouts ready for final well not final assembly but we get the last few parts together before we start putting some green all over this thing so i'll be back in a sec and we'll wrap up this half of the project I thought it was probably worth showing you, just in case you, you've never done this sort of thing before. Um, it's pretty basic stuff, but um, since I'm bending these parts, I, I thought I'd show how I tackle it and you know the general way that you go about this sort of thing. So again, at the risk of repeating myself, sound like a broken record. These parts are cast flat, but they need to be curved to match the curvature of this um, sort of um scalloped shape if that's even the correct term which it probably isn't but they need to match that that shallow curvature there and they obviously don't when you receive them so that needs to be corrected or at least bent to shape so um with resin uh it's just a, a really heat sensitive material if you introduce some heat into it it gets quite pliable and you can bend it to a shape hold it there wait for it to cool down or dip it in cold water as long as you can maintain that shape and it will it will hold that shape once it's cooled back down so what i've got here is just some hot water boiled the kettle and then pop the button just before it actually boiled so all i'm going to do with my tweezers here is just going to hold it in the water uh, just for a minute or two and that's going to warm that resin until the part is nice and pliable and then I'll just bend it to shape, get it to match this curve and then wait for it to cool down enough that it resets. So it's just a bit of a waiting game. Obviously don't burn yourself when you're doing this. There we go. I mean, obviously you can't tell, but this part now is really soft and pliable, but it's not going to stay like that for too long. It's soon going to start cooling down. So I've got a nice bend in there and I've found that it's actually better to over, over bend these parts. And then as you're putting it on that curved contour, they'll sort of flatten out and you can apply a bit of pressure and get them to match that curve more closely. So something like that and there you go dead simple so and yeah so this has already started to stiffen back up again because it's starting to cool off so dead easy so I might as well do the other one since I've got a camera set up and you know can't hurt to see it twice eh so we'll just repeat that just leave that there 
Again, this water isn't boiling, but it's not far short of boiling. <clears throat> you can probably do this with hair dryers if the if the part is thin enough, or a heat gun set on you know really low. Just be careful with heat guns because you can really easily just torch the plastic and just sort of melt and destroy it. So I don't tend to use heat guns for this sort of thing. few seconds does it that's probably enough look at that like butter putting quite a quite a tighter curve on there than is needed but again like I say when I fit it to the part I'll press it down and it will flatten back out and match that curve really nicely and there you go, it's already stiffening back up. So, very simple, straightforward stuff. No problem at all. So there we go. Um, obviously this method um, can correct warp parts as well, no pun intended. So if you're buying other resin parts from you know me or, or other garage manufacturers, that you know, and you get a part that's not the shape it should be, you just do this, you just warm it up, and it goes for fiberglass as well. If you've got fiberglass parts, just warm those parts up. Um, find a way of correcting the shape and, and holding it in place while it cools back off. And, and you're good to go. You're golden. And you can repeat the process as many times as you need, really, until you get the, until you get the part to the shape that you want it. So there we go. Easy. Uh, I'm going to carry on, and I'll see you in a minute. And there we go. Quick look on handheld shaky cam. That's all those surface detail parts in place and uh, looking pretty decent. So I'm going to give these a, a light dusting over with the primer just to tie them all, all together. Um, but yeah, good to go on those. And there you go. They match the curve really well. Lovely. So there we go. All right, moving on, moving on. So you can see I've got the main assemblies pretty much finished as they're going to be before I have to assemble it all in the end. Um, now, for those not familiar with this ship, uh, the top assembles onto it like a clamshell, like that, and then you've got that huge void in the middle, and then obviously the head plugs in there. Um, forgive the sniffing again, I'm still nursing this cold. Um, so the main issue you've got when you're building this is if you assemble it all together before you paint it one how can you tackle those seams in there and two how the hell are you going to paint it so you're left with no choice but to get as much together as you can and leave it in two halves and then paint it as well as you can and then deal with those seams left up there um, after the fact so they're not going to be perfect but they'll be good enough um, so yeah, so there we go. They're all in place. They're all. I use five minute epoxy to get the engines and this tailpiece in position and get them lined up. And I used actually the upper half of the clamshell to trap everything in place and hold everything in position alignment wise while the while the epoxy cured it. So I didn't get misalignment with the engine sort of leaning to one side or getting the tail leaning to one side. So it's all lined up pretty well, well, you know, as well as the kit is going to allow. I'm rid of that rubbish. Uh, yeah, so good to go, good to carry on painting. Um, a quick word about these seams on the engine. Get it in frame, Wayne. Now, ordinarily, I would fill that in and make that go away, that separation there. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother with this because I'm not going to overly fuss over it. This build is more just sort of a showcase for the parts more than anything else, the upgrade parts. Um, if I was to build this again, I would I would make that seam disappear completely because if you look at photos of the original, um, that should be a completely like seamless transition going up and over, up into the upper part. Um, but like I say, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I might do a little bit extra cleaning up. There's some little spots here that that are pretty obvious, but 
Um, again, I'm not going to worry too much about it because it's a bit more of a... It's, it's not a finished piece, um, like a display piece. It's just a show piece for these parts, as I've said. So, um, I've pulled the masking off of this engine and just off the top of this tailpiece, just to give an indication of how the lighting is looking. So, if I just switch on the power, and there you can, there you can see how well the diffusion is tackling that green LED. Now you'll notice at the bottom, well actually on the top, there's some patchy bits where the clear red paint has been attacked by the resin. I used, um, what did I use? Can't remember now, it might have been um, UV Cure clear resin to stick this clear part in and it's actually attacked the green tran uh, the transparent green paint on the inside of that which is a bit of a bugger not ideal so what I might end up doing is masking around the outside of this and then giving it a couple of coats on the outside to see if I can mitigate that a bit and make that go away a little bit or even maybe frost it with some dulling spray or something not sure um, I'll give it a go anyway um, but I'm not going to worry about it too much and there's the front um, sort of collectors it looks ho overly hot spotty on the camera that very front emitter it's not quite that stark to um, to the naked eye um, and if I just turn this overhead off so it's a bit darker um, you can see this exposed paint uh, part of this upper tail part where I haven't painted it obviously because um, the lights on the upper clamshell are going to shine down in there but even without that you can see how much light is being transmitted and diffused through that part just from that little strip below it so really to be honest probably don't even need the upper um, led strip i'll i'll include them anyway because it, it can't hurt um they're already installed and the wiring is already there but um so if you're building this using these parts I would say once you've um, light blocked it all and got all that light trapped and bouncing around in there, you probably don't even need two strips. Just just one will do it. It looks like there's more than enough light in there to get all those windows lit up. Um, so there we go. Um, there's a few tiny little light leaks, but I'm, I'll tackle those as and when with either a paintbrush or the airbrush because I've bombed enough um primer on this now I don't want to keep throwing loads of primer on it it's done the vast majority any little bits like down in there those little I don't know if they're phaser emitters or something um, I'll tackle that with a brush or the airbrush or something like that so there we go that's the lower part all, all ready to be turned green so um, just before I move on I'll give you a quick look at the head because um, that's ready to go seems are pretty well taken care of there's a few little nicks here and there that i might deal with as i go along but again i'm not going to get overly fussy about it but for the like vast majority of the seam is gone and about as clean as it's going to get uh, you're not going to get any cleaner than that using the original stock kit parts either just for the nature of how it gets assembled um, and having a seam running through all of that surface detail is a bit of a nightmare but um, it is what it is uh, it's the only way I can make this part and have that chasm inside there to allow light in and you know I could make a master and preen all this up perfect and then cast a solid piece but then you'd have to try and drill down in there manually and try and poke an LED it's, you know it's, it's problematic so having having um, cast in two halves allows me to give you that chasm inside there that clearance um, to get any lighting components in there pretty easy um, and dealing with that seam isn't that that difficult really so yeah there we go so might as well just put some power to this while we're here <clears throat> and there we go obviously you can't see a lot just where the paint is thin where I've been dealing with light leaks and that you see where there's light just sort of poking out on the beak in the end of the beak there so plenty of light you can see some light leaks still forgive the crude nature of this but uh, yeah so again same story I'm not going to start bombing more um, primer on this 
because there's already a lot on there so um, what I'll do is just tackle those either with flat black on a paintbrush or with an airbrush either either um, so yeah good to go so that will do for this part oh no hang on just a quick look at the upper half uh, the upper clamshell the upper half again I've taken care of the seams around this part about as well as I'm going to I'm not going to spend too much time getting overly fussy about it if it was a display piece or a commission obviously I'd make it look a lot better than it is now but this is just a showcase for these parts as I've said before and repeating myself so yeah that's the upper part, good to go. You see the wires um, to pass through the various sections. So I'll hook those up when I come to assemble it later on down the line. So in terms of build and assembly, I'm about as far as I can get um, and have to paint this thing now. So um, I'll leave it here for this part and um, I'll come back in part two and we'll talk about the paint then. Um, so that'll do for now thanks for watching the video uh, I hope you find this useful I hope you like the look of the parts and if you've already got them um, then I hope this sort of helps um, illuminate no pun intended <laughs> how best to use them and you know, they really are straightforward easy to use parts and um, you'll see once it's all been painted and I start clearing out these windows with a little pin vice drill um, and just poking the holes in the paint you'll see just how quick it is to get really good looking lights and thousands and thousands of windows without running loads of fiber optics and drilling through the plastic and all that nonsense. So yeah, again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in part two before we start throwing some paint around. So catch you in a bit. <laughs>